Maybe. Oh, there I am. Yeah. Yeah. I have also seen the comments actually on your paper. I think you need to cost, like, contextualize more. I mean, the general theoretical framework is okay, mm -hmm. but maybe you didn't have yeah. time to contextualize properly your no. presentation. But I think it's the role of traditional role of the public That's sector no. providing information for the sector. I mean, institutional deficiencies. They are much more than all in the they are all in the political perspective. It's an example oh, okay. case study. Uh, why it doesn't work in a job? Do I have to press the move? No, it's not working. No, it's not working. No, it's not şey gibi bakamıyor bir tane. Ya aslında bizim şeyimiz yeah, yeah. birazcık daha düz. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yani yani on, şey, şey var, şeyde, şey. Yani bu tip şeylerle işsizlik, en cesizliği yüksekliğinden geldiğimizde bu sakın bir 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 sakın is it working? Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm a sociologist for uh, Liverpool University <coughs> and my two long-term areas of specialization have been sociology of youth and sociology of leisure. And sometimes they come together like in the topic that we do this morning, which is <coughs> uses of free time by young people in the Salwa countries. <coughs> and I'm, I'm starting with a phrase that I've picked up from the Algeria country report, which was the, the big emptiness. Yeah. And the explanation is the absence of infrastructure yeah and i thought both of them are phrases are exaggerations but they do make a valid powerful point yeah so i've taken your your phrase clearly that there is some infrastructure in all the countries and some young people are using it. But then there is leisure that is organized informally, yeah, and does not require any infrastructure. This, this formal informal distinction, we find it in economic life, in the labor market, with jobs, formal, informal. I think in discussing politics, there will be the formal politics of political parties and meetings and demonstrations and the informal politics of the neighbourhood and the street, the coffee house, the bazaar. And we have formal and informal leisure. For formal leisure here is where there is a provider, public or commercial, and a user, client or customer, <clears throat> Informal leisure is where the people just do it themselves on the street, in the neighborhood, or, 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 or wherever. And the Savar project has information about both types of leisure. <clears throat> and our best information about formal leisure is from the youth surveys, the quantitative surveys that get data on participation in activities and membership of associations and uses of the media. From the survey, there are some indications of informal leisure, but the richest information is from the qualitative field work. Yeah. And I, I want to illustrate, illustrate both and the issues that can be explored with the evidence that Sava is collecting. Mm. I've taken data from the youth survey in Lebanon, yeah? 
as one example. And I've rounded the percentages and I've just taken participating in it at least once a week because I think this gives the best indication of the proportions of young people who are regularly involved in different types of leisure. I mean, the overall picture is that the numbers are low. If the same questions are asked in Britain, North America, Western Europe, the percentages will generally be much higher. The detailed figures will differ from country to country, but I think the overall picture will be that the figures are low. And the reason is the one you give. Yeah. <laughs> and basically it is because these are relatively poor countries. And the public authorities do not have much money to spend on leisure infrastructure. And private consumers don't have enough to spend to bring forth private commercial providers on the market. The final figure there in italics is a rough indication of involvement in informal leisure. Yeah? It's going out, out regularly with friends. And I, th I thought that figure was rather low. Yeah. I mean, it's 57%. But then I thought that there will be a gender division difference, whether young men, young women, hang about on the streets in the neighborhood. And I also realized that we have the age group 15 to 29, yeah? And in the older age groups, there'll be some of our respondents who are living with partners, and they may be parents. And the hanging about in the neighborhood on the street with friends is probably a phase that young people go through, and then it, it passes, yeah? So, one indication, but got to be interpreted cautiously. And I think all, the, all these figures, which are for Lebanon, then they're for the entire sample, there will be differences by gender, by cities, between cities and country, and by age groups, as we go from 15 up to 29. Also have figures for participation in organizations. Again, the overall impression is that the numbers are very low. In Britain, if we ask this question, sport clubs would be at the top of the list. Yeah. I mean, the most likely club that young people are to join, but the percentage would be much higher. Yeah. Also, I think, looking at both of these figures, it is unlikely to be entirely different individuals who belong to sport clubs, trade unions, political parties. It's unlikely to be entirely different people who go to the theater, cinema, do all the other things. So I expect to find minorities among the samples who are active across a wide range of formal leisure activities and have multiple memberships of associations and other young people are entirely absent. Yeah, your big emptiness. But where the numbers go up is when we look at numbers who are using the media, yeah? The elephant in the room is a phrase that I've lifted. I mean, the new media are, are new. If, if you just reflect, 
there is no one anywhere, no private citizens who had broadband before the year 2000. Then it broadband becomes available in North America. There is nobody anywhere who has a smartphone before 2009. Yeah. And then you contemplate the way in which use has spread since then. And there's been talk about a digital divide, there still is, there still is a divide, but the boundary, the line is shifting every year, yeah? Between levels of use in different countries and between different groups within countries. And I think very soon it's going to be like television, quickly becoming universal to all intents and purposes. Though there will be some people, just as there are some people who still will not have a television in the house. I know such people, I'm not one of them. <laughs> yeah. And there will be some people who refuse to go online, yeah. but effectively coverage is on its way, it seems to become universal. In parts of North Africa and the Middle East, there uh, are regions with no signal but believe me if nobody else does Facebook or Google are going to fix that <laughs> yeah. they are going to get everybody as far as they can they're going to get them online the newspaper readership I also have data from Algeria on this I mean, television is still the big consumer of time. <laughs> <laughs> and, but now, in addition to this, you have the new media. And a suggestion and a hypothesis I'm putting to you is that this is what now fills the big emptiness. Yeah. And I'll come on to that, but I've only got five minutes, they said. I mean, I've got evidence about, about formal leisure, some types of formal leisure, from the qualitative field work. In Tunisia, there is information about young people who belong to various youth and cultural centres and studies of political activists. There is also information about this in the Egypt country report, but I only got it two days ago and so it isn't on the screen. From Algeria, we have information about a hero, and I'm presenting, if you get, pronouncing it correctly, it's um, an association of um, Muslims who call themselves the brothers and they do charitable and proselytizing work. Yeah. And I have some hypotheses about the significance of formal leisure. One is that we're going to find that all the formals are related to one another. That young people who achieve informal education and get formal qualifications tend to be those who, are, who get the formal jobs and tend to be the ones who become the formal political activists and are involved in all related to each other. And that at the end of this, both ends, we can put family class origins and family class destinations. I can explore this in the, in, the, in the data. All types of leisure that involve association with other people, they perform a social bonding function. Now, <coughs> I'm using these terms as in Robert Putnam's. Do you know Putnam, the American political scientist? Bonding binds a group together produces greater solidarity. You get this in all types of, of leisure, formal and informal. But membership of formal associations, according to Putnam, 
addition of it performs linking and bridging functions. This is, is linking different groups together, like different religious groups, political groups. Bridging is when an individual moves from one group to another, supposedly facilitating social mobility. Yeah? I don't believe in. I, well, I'm incredibly suspicious. I think it's mainly bonding, yeah? Whether the leisure is formal or informal. And I... That was my informal. Why am I not moving? With the I want. I want it to move forward. Mm -hmm. There we go. I bust it. It's about informal measure and how we have examples from the field work in all the countries where I've read the report. Uh, let's uh, try to close you. Yes, I am, I am trying to close. I'm summarizing it very briefly, yes. which led to that final slide, where I think we can establish do you want to the last one? No, 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 no. Next one. This one. This next one. one. This one. Yes. Okay. This one. Next one. And next you pass one. Before. Okay, yeah. They took the hand identify those young people who are involved in both formal and informal leisure. Yeah? Those whose leisure is overwhelmingly informal and those who are totally non-participant, of whom I found examples in Algeria which are from, I mean necessarily from individuals who are not regularly meeting friends and part of the groups that you will study in your informal fieldwork. I mean they're both young women who are at home, yeah? And they are going watching television, and they are going online, and they're going on Facebook, and it's monotonous. Yeah? It fills what's otherwise the empty time. And the issues to be explored are who has these different types, where are they geographically and socially, and why the answers matter. Okay, I have finished now. As you keep telling me, I said thank you. <laughs> Can we collect some questions, uh, a couple of them, and then we continue? Uh, questions and comments, please. Well, I, I know what you, you have been uh, addressed. Uh, I am Gemma Barre, part of the advisory board, but also I'm working at the Annaline Foundation. And we are editing every two years a report about the trends on the region, on, uh, on perceptions and values, and one of our main uh, targets are youth. And uh, I want just to share two questions that for us regarding the last uh, this last report we did uh, in 2014, we edited it, it is one, one year and a half ago, has been quite surprising. The opinion poll we developed with more than 15,000 uh, citizens around the region, 1,000 in Egypt, for example, for each country, um, after the Arab revolutions, we were convinced that, um, okay, the participation of youth and the involvement of youth in the social matters will be very important. In general, because I didn't, have, I didn't have time to check in the data, but 
In general, what surprised to us, or perhaps it was normal, and perhaps now this trend can be confirmed, this is a trend of just one year after the revolution of, in, this, in this context, is that the people from the South, the youth from the South, has been much uh, less involved on the social matters than the youth on the North. Both are quite accepting, but what surprised more is that the youth people in the South, the Mediterranean countries, think that it's not useful for them to be involved in social or in civil society uh, organizations. And this is quite interesting to understand to which, for, which, uh, for what I need to be involved in this uh, civil society let me know, uh, 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 trend. This, I think, it's really interesting if you match this with, your, uh, with uh, the, the data from Lebanon regarding the people and the involvement of people in association. This is interesting as a trend, but needs to be, ref needs to be contrasted now in the current circumstances in the region. But this is interesting. We can be interested to participate in formal structures like political parties, but why I need to be involved in civil society structures as citizens if this is uh, need to be, uh, at the end of the day, a result for, for myself or for, my, for me as youth. A second question is what uh, also you show about media, social media and media. For us now, one of the questions we would like to analyze in the, in the new uh, report is something that we say how, if me as citizens of, or as youth person, I'm trusting the media. What is my level of trust in what the news are telling to me? Of course, television, we know by heart, is the instrument at a popular level, and it needs to remain, or it's remaining, the analysis of television and programs to television, a very interesting data for all of us to understand. But the question of the civil society and, I'm sorry, uh, social media, in comparison with the traditional newspapers and news, even newspaper on web, on, in, in the, in online, it's really interesting to understand why I'm trusting or not trusting what I am uh, receiving. And it's, uh, we arrive exactly, in, you, you say this question about Lebanon, and when you, I saw this, uh, this picture of this data, are exactly the trends that we are perceiving in general in the region. And this is why for us, one of our questions would be this specific question about are you trusting what the news or what the media are telling you, and which is uh, the reason for this? Or for I think these are just two of the questions because really it's a really important and general approach. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm Rania Rocha from the Population Council of Israel. Um, I'm wondering if you had time to investigate uh, this distribution of uh, the time used like, by some background characteristics like employment, education, because I think it would matter for those who are employed versus those who are not employed working and so on and so forth. Because going back to her point, like from the Sharif young people, many people who, and, like many of them people reported in 2009 that they, don't, they are not involved in, civic, uh, in any type of civic uh, engagement activities because of that time. This is among, among other several reasons. I think you might want to check. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Uh, I feel like being called up to talk because you mentioned my country. So uh, I'd like to bring some precisions. Uh, first is uh, maybe a methodological issue is about uh, what has been said. <coughs> about Hera association, the example of Sumia and so on, they have been taken out of the uh, national case study. But I suppose that these issues uh, to be weighed all over the society, we should use the survey data about this uh, subject. Because you've, you have taken maybe the best example of Hera because it's the human side of association, but you haven't used the, the uh, sad 
or the, uh, the worst side of the association, which is the hippies, people using drugs, as, as not an association, but a, uh, a social grouping, if I can say. But that's why uh, uh, this kind of typology, I think, it has to be weighed in the society through the survey uh, data, later on, of course, later on, through the scientific papers or whatever. So I think that the uh, issues you raised are very, well, I, I don't agree a lot with the uh, word you use, brothers. Uh, well, uh, for the association here, because uh, it has not the same meaning uh, brothers as uh, being together, not in political terms. Like for example in, uh, meaning in Egypt, when you say uh, Muslim brothers and so on, it has not the same meaning at all. It is just for human issues and objective, nothing at all to do with uh, politics. Well, not to be, uh, to monopolize uh, uh, the mic, I'd like just to uh, give sort of very big uh, observation and scientific observation about the uh, culture and infrastructure and also and all this kind of thing. I might say that the, uh, the institutional supply exists in Algeria. Just take the uh, number of youth clubs and so on. But the problem is what she said before, problem of trust. It, it seems that it doesn't fit young uh, needs. So they've been built out of the social dialogue. It, they, they, they have been state built, if I can say. That's a problem. They, they didn't go towards these institutions. But these institutions exist, even if we have a big lack. Just let me give you, give you an example. In Algiers, we have 300 cinemas which are closed up. Right? Thank you. Can I do the Okay. Please. Yeah. I cannot, uh, maybe the microphone is okay. Uh, yes, I, I, I like the discussion about leisure. Close. Okay, I like the discussion about the leisures, uh, time and the the empty, emptiness, uh, but I wanted to make three points, three remarks. First of all, I, I don't understand very well if you took the example from the qualitative survey from our countries or also the quantitative survey, I don't know, because yes, uh, it's missing for me, I don't understand, but it's not the same level of investigation from Algeria and Tunisia. But the, First, I want to know from where you took this uh, information. My second note is about the institution setting. I think it's very important because as uh, for education and schooling, uh, the leisure and cultural things uh, we have uh, to compare the setting, the, the institution the city. Because we have a lot of maisons de la culture, something from bureaucratic and institutional and formal, but nobody wants to go. The youth don't, don't want to go or use in another way the formal things. I think that it's very, very important to think about uh, the comparison between Europe and uh, uh, North Africa and even MENA institutional setting to think about why, why Europeans go to the museum, to the more to the cultural uh, institution or sports uh, and less uh, the Arabs and especially women. Because uh, I think that it's very, very important to, to understand uh, even in the uh, educational system if there are some encouragement to go and to push uh, youth and children to go to this formal institution because it would never be pushed and uh, uh, using to, to go there. It's not at 20 or at 9 uh, or 18 that you go for the first time to, to this formal institution for uh, cultural things. And after all, it's also 
place for leisure. Now, okay, just a little tips about the, the foreign TV. If you have to distinguish between the foreign TV and the Arab TV in our country, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, distinction because more and more, for instance, in Tunisia, when it is foreign TV, it's Arab TV. Before, you have uh, Rai TV, uh, you have Rai Uno, Rai Tugu, and France and there, and so on. Now, you have more and more, uh, uh, maybe Jazeera or Arabia, and it's more Arabs TV, and I don't know if they put them in foreign TV or national TV. My third and last note is about, uh, it's about uh, uh, associations. You know, before, for instance, in Tunisia, you don't want to go to the civil society and, and associations because it's all are under the control of, uh, of parties and of uh, political parties and the one political parties and two small orders. It means that they don't want to go to under the control and they are not feel free to, to be member in the associations. After the Arab, what you name, Arab Spring, uh, in Tunisia we have uh, double and double and double as as associations, and we conduct a survey in Tunisia for men and women, for youth, and uh, we have uh, a lot, a lot of uh, youth uh, members in new associations. We have a lot of emerging associations and they prefer to be in <coughs> associations to do informal politics, but politics in associations, but not informal parties. Even if after the revolution, we could, we could say that we have a lot, a lot of parties also. But uh, the youth resist to <coughs> remember to, to go to parties, and they prefer to go to the civil society. And now we have more youth and women in civil society, and I would say that uh, even uh, for uh, the battle, the fight for equality between men and women, for instance, if uh, the civil society did well, so, so well, 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 I think that it can break the constitution, the equality, and all of this. It means that civil society is very strong uh, now in Tunisia, mm -hmm. at least in Tunisia. I don't know in other countries. Okay. Maybe um, two minutes, a short one. Yes. Please okay. be short. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, two small questions. The first one is uh, concerning the word emptiness. I mean, I'm a bit uh, like uh, concerned with the word emptiness. I mean, I remember when you say that Sumaya and Esma said that they, are, they have free time at home. This reminds me of when you ask women, do you work? No, I don't work. And then they end up doing like millions of things at home. And actually they might be really exerting more effort than men do outside or just as much. So what is exactly emptiness? Is it really sitting doing nothing? Or do they have the family issues, the bringing up the kids, the cleaning, etc. the women, you know, uh, productive, uh, domestic, uh, reproductive uh, role? This is one issue. The second issue, did you uh, compare with um, the financial well-being of uh, the, the persons you asked? I mean, to go to sports. I mean, I know in Egypt, for example, those who go to sports, who do sports, uh, uh, go from the well, uh, the medium, high, medium, or high, upper, medium, or high uh, class. I mean, to, is, it, uh, is it because of that they don't have the mean that is, or they're not interested, etc.? I mean, I would like to know more about the variables that were using. Yes, well, most of those questions were comments, so I can read them at that. And the questions were questions that I cannot answer. No, no, no. Not, well, not, not, not within the time which you're going to impose upon me. But the, the important point is that measure is the arena where, where, where aggregates based on the education and the labour market acquire a social and cultural dimension which links some young people into networks that can become politically efficacious and most 
are completely outside <coughs> such networks. So we are linking education, the labor market, notion politics. Right. Right. That's the application. Uh, we have only 15 minutes before the coming break. So uh, now we have the last speaker, Dr. Jose Sanchez Gas. We talk about from work, youth, young transitions in time. It's, uh, it's amazing to to stay here talking about youth because I was here in 1999 to listen to Arabic classical music concert in this Orient Hall. And for me now, 17 years old, uh, before, uh, after I can speak about young people here. Okay, uh, my intention is to, to show you how we are working on the a scientific paper called it, uh, uh, mapping uh, youth transitions in five Arabic countries. The main objectives of this scientific paper is analyze the interaction between the structural framework and the ability of individual action, the agency of young people in the context of biographical experiences. Uh, the second objective is to detect main challenges, differences and changes in the youth strategies to face adulthood. And finally, map the youth transition according with three main uh, differences in young people in Arabic countries is gender, class, and cultural capital also. Okay, our starting point uh, is uh, youth traditionally has been perceived as transitional period to adulthood which encompasses some transitional social rituals such as marriage can represent in Arabic North African countries. But the school toward transition of young people is a topic of that starting now in the, in the research areas. Uh, but more than this, for young people, a school toward transition is the main and decisive step which very often shapes their whole life. In other words, in the, in the literature about transition, young people uh, look primarily at the productive capacity of the individuals of these young people, is that it privileges a primarily, primarily economic view of the movement from school to work. And those don't, those, those don't adequately take into consideration issues of right, equity, justice, citizenship, and aspiration of young themselves. In other words, you tend to be treated more as objects than as agents of this transition. With uh, our view is consider the strong link between life experiences of Arab youth, institutional frameworks in which they operate, and the specific socio-historical context that influence this process. No work. Uh, it's the case it's for you as well, is it? Yeah. We'll throw it on the floor. <laughs> okay. uh, in the, um, how we can do this? Uh, our theoretical framework is the life course perspective. This means that we take uh, uh, long-term processes from 15 years old until Marriott, that uh, first week of May I was in uh, Morocco and Ministry of Youth and Sports said that youth end with 45 years. And for me it's amazing that one ministry said this. Uh, another one? Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then, like, the idea is to, to, to try to understand the another one please because I must to focus on the on the findings. Okay. We have trajectories and transitions. And this is our uh, idea. Trajectory is the full itinerary of life of the subjects. Okay. From um, born until death. But the concept of transition refers to the various episodes in that this life cycle is broken. 
not necessarily predefined or predetermined, but make, okay, make changes in the status positions. But we are uh, collected uh, something like we call it transitional turning points, like entering working life, finalized studies, marriage, and leaving home taking into consideration the kinship structures and relevance of the family in Arab societies. But we are working with transition turning points and intersectionality. What means intersectionality? Uh, the intersectional mechanism overlay, overlays social identities to individuals who confer privileged or unfavorable positions in the social structure. This is the idea. Causing relevant differences in the life trajectories and in the transitional turning points. So, gender, job, status. Here. Uh, or the family capital, this is respectability, honesty, honor, also what's the connection in social, in, in, in Arabic societies, determine the decisions of youth, of young people, on their way to adulthood. The integration of these social conditions and identities that it conforms social inequalities could be seen as matrix of domination, defined as vectors of oppression and privilege, as Collins and Richard uh, are working on. This is our research questions, but this research question is coming directly from the from the concept paper and background papers of the of the Sahua project. We are trying to answer this. You can read in the background papers and concept papers and focus on another question. Well, how we can do this? Our methodology establishes the age core to conduct fieldwork between 15 and 29 years. But following our idea of life trajectories we can describe two main transitional turning points in Arab Mediterranean countries. First, the transition to work or study at end of obligatory education. Second, the transition from higher education to work. This is two moments, but we can, we can read in long uh, time trajectories. According with the results of the Youth Survey, first results, and ethnographic field work, after finishing or leave high school, it starts a period in which young people are trying to achieve certain economic autonomy to manage their life. Manage means marry or uh, to be independent from the family. We're using also life stories as biographical examples of transitional uh, trajectories. Okay, this is a methodology here. Don't worry, okay. How we can identify in our age cohort? You can see this uh, table. The transitional turning points are established mainly between 25 and 29 years old, because it's the difference between married and single. Uh, uh, and you can see also in the Lebanon case, how, many how much people are living with the parents. Between 15 and 18, uh, a big number. This is the sense between 19 and 24, but between 25 and 29 is the big, uh, in, in the big uh, people that live without, uh, uh, in, in an independent way. Okay, as Ayub in Morocco said in the, in, the, in the video of life stories, it's a time to achieve responsibility. This means that the young people are trying to collect money, earn money, to uh, marry. This is the, the final idea. But we have also a marriage paradox, you know, because, okay, all the people are like uh, in uh, focus groups in Algeria, say, for me, marriage is nif is din, sacred religious duty, and they move away from the harem, they say, live your life, you, well, you are young, I do not understand. What I want is to live my life with my wife. But you know marriage is still a dream. Okay, but this is a paradox, because when you go to the survey, the people in Lebanon say, I don't want to. I don't want to marry. And this is a big paradox. We can try to, to, to explain, okay, to explain this kind of paradox. What happened? 
you can the people in the service say this, but when the people uh, talk about marriage, they think it's an important thing. Other questions. Uh, we are trying to intersection family social capital with uh, transition. Because it's important the honor, the respectability, uh, and the honesty of the name of a family to, to, to get uh, uh, to get a fiancé, to get a, a, a right to, to get a, 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 to get married. This is the this is the big question. Five, three, three minutes. I I pass under on, until the end. And this is our preliminary conclusion to discuss here. The transition from school to labor takes on a large individualized dimension. Focused on expectations, strategies, and specific capital that accumulates on the subject by cognitive transversal direction. It has reduced the effectiveness of institutionalized channels to reach adulthood in the life experience of young Arabs. Transit. This transition depends on the performative agency of individuals, but youth are located in a framework of limited agency by social constrictions. Finally, another feature of the transition from juvenile period is the temporary extension. It provokes postpone the definite independence and assumption of traditionally defined roles for adult population for a large mass of young people. And to finish, we are working on uh, discussing with also uh, our colleagues in Italy. In Italy, we are uh, we are discussing about this kind of gender paradox that we are uh, looking for in, in, in our data. First, boys are still subject to traditional rules for marriage, which involves the need to find a stable and well-paid jobs to obtain the necessary goods to establish a new home. Please. Here. And we can do some questions. Uh, are girls building their transition for a more independent way? How does it affect this gender paradox to transitional experiences for young women? Are there leading changes in ways of understanding marriage, work, and adult female life? Somehow, does the current model of gender plays against an effective transition to adulthood for young men? How do young men leave the contradiction between current economic situation and the cultural requirements to be considered an adult in the region? Uh, I used to finish here because it's, the, it's my... I, I, I spend my time, yes. Thank you very much for respecting the time. Okay, we are already behind schedule, so we have basically um, yes, um, in less than 10 minutes for questions and answers. I will take, please try to be precise and short. I will take questions first and give the floor to Jose afterwards, please. Ask a lot of questions, but then should First, for me, the gender thing, I think, and the afternoon we will go in deep. It's really, really one of the main and major matters. But, uh, okay. No, a question that we were like, uh, you are talking about educated youth in two levels, formal education, basic education, primary education, and university, and the other people. We are not, just as a question, we are not attacking one of the most important targets <laughs> that are transitioning with a major number of challenges, let me say, in which way the research will tackle this and not to go only for uh, a focus. Uh, Another question? Yes, Thank you. Uh, my name is Harry Mason. I'm from the University of Tampere from Finland. I was just trying to raise one question about regarding a few questions that which also affects to my own work that actually we are in a way limited regarding our analysis because we are dependent on the data. And if the data does not say something which probably is relevant, what can we do? We have to follow the data. So that's just what I would like to stress. Brackets, no? This is 
is a question. I know that this is not exist in Arab, something like youth Arabic, uh, Arab, Arab, youth Arabs, or Spanish Arab, uh, youth, it's the same. We know that there is a heterogeneous category, but in the, in, in the South of Red, we decide to follow 15 and 29. I know that in uh, the construction of youth as social category in Arabic countries, but also in Europe, but also in everywhere, is determined for social, con social conditions, not for AIDS. No, it's nothing about biologic uh, states. And I think that it's important to know that we are trying to, in my idea, to compose something like a map of possible transitions to our world. This is the idea that to map the life stories and to compose something like a phenomenological approach to transitions. Because I think that it's more important subjectivities of youth that all that we can talk about youth without youth. And I think that in our research it's important that to, to, do, to give voice to this young people and what I think about. About the question of uh, the other kind of young people, the focus on the focus on uh, in, in, our, in our paper, the focus on is between fe uh, finalized the, the mandatory education until until the status of family. Yeah, this is the question. But we don't forget that here there are people that start to work at 14 years old. Don't forget this. Mm -hmm. But we must take uh, a sample. Is it 50 uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Finnish the, the, the mandatory education until 29? But if you, are, if you leave the mandatory education before, we take into consideration what happened with this time with young people also. But we have a data and we are using survey data, focus group data, and special life stories about and that is uh, about uh, young people from 25 to 29 mm -hmm. to reconstruct this trajectory. This is the idea that I'm working on. I think that I'm trying to answer your question. Thank you. Um, now I suggest we go out. Uh, yes, thank you.